what the hell is a niche or niche or however the hell you pronounce it? And why does it matter? Well, that's what we're talking about today on Everyday KT number 233. Figuring out what your specialty and the thing that makes you different is and how to apply that not only in everyday life but in in your work or in your professional whatever it is how to make that do something for you so first and foremost a niche or niche I've heard it pronounced both ways I don't care one way or the other I use niche um, what that is that's your thing that is the like your calling card your well, I'll use an example because it's a hell of a lot easier. For me, you know, I'm in marketing, I do PR, I do brainstorming, I do mentoring and business development for companies looking to expand, develop, or build upon their existing brand or start from scratch. Uh, what's my thing? Well, I, my kilt is kind of my calling card, but my niche is working with small businesses. And what you can do what I do is I work with those smaller businesses and use my kilt as the icebreaker thing. So niche, that's your, let's put it this way. Okay, so here's a clock. I'll actually, this is actually a really good example. This is a clock, okay? Take this for instance. This is all of whatever you do. Say you are a carpenter. This is all things carpentry. Every single thing that you can do for carpentry. Now, say you are an expert cabinet maker, but you suck at framing. So what does that mean? That means cabinet making is right here from 10 to 11. So that's your niche. This little tiny slice of all of carpentry. Little teeny tiny nut bit. So this is your niche. This is your area of expertise. This is the spot where you are awesome. Over here is framing, probably not so much. Down here, you know, roofing. Over here, you know, uh, large scale furniture building, decking up here. Not great at all this stuff right here, right? But right here, that's where you are. That's what you're good at. That's your niche. Okay? So, niche, niche, whatever. The tiny piece of your industry that you are amazing at. So why does that matter? Very simple. You are, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to throw a guess out that a vast majority of you have a job and there is a significant number of you in who are uh, trying to start your own thing. And whatever that might be, it doesn't really matter. But you have to start small, the tiny piece of your market. So, for instance, we I had a discussion this afternoon with one of my networking groups, or this morning, and we were talking to a gentleman who is trying to find a uh, his niche. He's got a great product. He's really good at what he does. He's a very, very well-spoken individual. Um, very good, easy to talk to, very... Um, articulate and can relate to a vast majority of people but he has the whole clock as it were as his as, as what, he, what he's what he's working with so actually let me back up I kind of screwed the pooch on a little bit so there's two types of niches one is what you do the other type is your niche is your piece of the market the, pe the amount of number of people you're trying to advertise to, unless you're Coca-Cola, Budweiser, whatever, where you're selling to everybody, you have a teeny tiny slice of people that you're trying to advertise to. So the carpenter right here, who his, his product niche is cabinetry, and he really likes working with young people. So his target demographic, his piece of that pie is first-time homebuyers who want new cabinets. That's his... That's his bread and butter that's what he loves doing boom that's his niche okay now uber business majors forgive me for screwing if, if i misspeak because i haven't taken any of these classes in 20 odd years so but it's important because you need to know what you're doing so this this uh gentleman we're working with this morning so he has this great product he knows his stuff inside out and sideways but he had he's having a hard time finding 
new clients. Uh, and it was very simple. The conversation was, so what do you like doing? He's like, well, I like um, next skiing. Uh, golf's fun, but I suck at it. I uh, really like aquariums. And he went on and on and on about, uh, for, you know, not on and on, but he, three or four more things. And I'm like, why can't you go after the high-end aquarium market? You know, the people who would have a high-end aquarium are probably in the same ballpark of the people you're looking for as clients for a particular industry. He's sitting there like, hmm, hadn't thought about that. So, what it does is you identify the thing that you, you, are passionate about, something that you like. You know, I, you know, I love talking to people, but, you know, I love working with the kilt wearing community because it's something that I can relate to very easily and I'm very passionate about because it's not just about wearing clothes. It's about people being people and just doing your you thing, you know, being a, a decent person. That's it. But we're in kill. So in that, what that does is that allows you to focus because if you have a thing, say I was trying to sell you this clock, right? Everybody needs a clock, obvious. But not everybody's going to buy this clock from me. Just because I have a kilt on doesn't mean they're going to buy this clock. So what does that mean? Well, I have to find the people that I can relate to. So what would I do? Well, I talk to everybody that's watching this video right now because they're more or less, more often than not first thing that spiked their or piqued their interest is the kilt. Oh, guy and kilt talking about stuff. Let's go see what he's got to talk about. So there's that relationship instantly, that connection, which makes it a lot easier to sell because hey, kilt folks, look, this clock. It's really awesome, but guess what it also does? It tells you when it is time to go get scotch. Right there. Is it upside down? Oh, it is upside down. Right there. Five o'clock somewhere. So, you can relate. It helps you relate to people. So, find that niche, that, that piece of the market that you can associate with and connect with very, very easily. If you're really good at making chain mail, the Renfair folks. If you love baseball but suck at it, guess what? There are fantasy leagues all over the world and they are rocking. You know, if you love race cars, NASCAR is kind of big. There's a lot of people that you can you can work with for your business. Yeah, the clock right here. Guess what time it is? Chris had a good point. When's the time to wear a clock? All the time. Unless you're in the shower. Not a good idea. So, find the thing that you love. Because what you can do is you can take that passion for your hobby, as it were, and you can translate that into business. Now, why does that matter from a kilt perspective? Very simple. I've got two, two people in particular that I love using for this example. One, our good friend, the kilted realtor, Corey, down in Texas. Million, thousands and hundreds of thousands of realtors all over the country. Guess what? KilterRealtor.com, the only one that I know. He's found his calling, the thing he loves working with, but you know he loves doing real estate and he loves kilts and he's using it. What does that mean? That means that he can effectively market towards people who wear kilts because they can associate with him very, very quickly. Another guy, Ed Hamilton, uh, men in skirts, men in skirt, men in kilts. No, the, the window washing company. I'm sorry I botched the name. Down in Texas. Guys in kilts washing windows. Two huge demographics. One, folks who like kilts. Two, folks who like watching people in kilts. Big, 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 big group of people right there. Perfect niche because you know why? There are literally thousands of people who wash windows. They all show up with their bucket, their pail, their little squeegee looking thing. So what? Men in, uh, the Men in Kilts truck shows up. People kind of get excited. The big tartan van, all the guys in kilts stroll out to come wash the windows. You know, some kid, some entrepreneuring or enterprising is the right word. I'm sorry. Some enterprising young kids walking around collecting tickets from the people watching the show. It's a good time. But it's a commodity that they've found a niche. They that's their thing. Their calling card, their 
their way to get your attention. And they can use that to focus on one particular tiny sliver of all of the people who could potentially buy that product and use that as a springboard for everybody else. So you start small, say, I'm going to sell to this group of people, sell to them, get really good, get lots of rave reviews, do awesome, and then expand. That's the way to go. Because if you just try to shotgun the whole universe, guess what? You run out of ammo really, really fast and you don't hit squat. So that's this whole niche thing. Uh, like I said, it came up this morning during one of my meetings and a conversation with Corey not too long ago. It's like, you know what? Might as well. So if you're in business, professionally, just thinking about it, make sure that before you spend way too much time um, selling, before you understand exactly who you are selling to, that little teeny slice of the people pie, that's who you target them first. Get them raving about you and everything else will just fall into place. If you can't get the people who you are really good with to understand, buy, and talk about your product, then you have a crap product and find something else. Um, bitter pill of reality there, but you know what? That's the way it is. So, this is what we're going to do. Uh, somebody throw me a Kiltology. Um, I'm not going to ramble on for too terribly long um, about this because it's important, but you guys should know what to do. So if somebody... Yeah, the thing with the sport, with the, the pockets, with the scotch or anything, that's awesome. It is really cool. Uh, most kilts, I like this one, two, two aprons. So, uh, Chris swings with uh, volume one. So we're going old school. <laughs> Dave, that's funny. So, I'm gonna, it doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about, but it directly relates to the comment that uh, Mr. Crandall made. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the first airing of this is live on Facebook. So that's why I'm talking to random people. Uh, Kiltology number 80. It's on Amazon. When the fit hits the shan, be sure you only lift the over apron to shield your face. Getting anything under the kilt at velocity is not recommended in any situation. What does that mean? That means, like he said, two aprons. Apron, outer apron, inner apron. This one can be lifted with... Minimal issue. Both of them lifted. Big problem. So, with that, uh, if you've got questions about this whole niche thing, niche, whatever the hell you want to call it, let me know. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Go have a taco, because Chris said so. And uh, be strong. Put a kilt on.